Today, let's talk all about how you can stop chasing the content with your podcast with a seasonal podcast. I'll give you some pros and cons coming up next. Hey there, podcaster. My name is Shannon Hernandez, radio broadcaster, podcaster, and podcast producer. And today we're talking all about a seasonal podcast. Should you do a seasonal podcast for your podcast? Or maybe are you someone who is starting out and needs to decipher or figure out whether or not a seasonal podcast is for you? Now, if you're just stumbling onto this channel for the very first time, I invite you to go on over to my website, theshanman.com, and download my essential quick start guide. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link for that up here on this video or down in the description below. And once you jump on the email list, I will send that uh, essential quick start guide over to you and you'll also get some helpful tips on my email newsletter that I send out every week if you happen to miss these videos as well. So let's talk all about the seasonal podcast and what exactly is a seasonal podcast. Well, you've seen these before if you're into podcasting and you are probably familiar with the more popular ones like Serial and maybe even the podcast called Startup. Now, these podcasts run on a seasonal basis like you would see something with a TV series uh, where you see like a Will and Grace back in the day used to be uh, you know a series of, of 12 to 15 episodes or maybe it was Breaking Bad and you see uh, that there's maybe 15 episodes of that. Now podcasts are starting to do that. And the reason podcasts are starting to do that, at least some of the podcasts out there, is because A, they're telling a story, but B, it gives the content creator a chance to go ahead and develop the story or develop the podcast over time. Seasonal podcasts are really valuable if you're providing valuable content, and typically that content is going to be something that's a little more evergreen so that people can come back and listen to it. So this type of content may be educational or it may be entertaining for someone to come back and listen to. So you have to kind of think, how am I going to structure my content around my, my, my current podcast, and will it be valuable for the listener in the end? That's something you really should be thinking about when you're creating the content. Now, what exactly is a seasonal podcast, and what does it consist of? Let's go over that real quick. Now, a seasonal co podcast can be pretty much as many episodes as you want, and the length can be as long as you want. It's really going to be up to you, but as I said before, it's got to be something that's of value, and if it's of value, then people will keep coming back to it, and they will keep listening to it. So you could look at a season, say, um, as 10 to 20 episodes. If you look at 26 episodes, that's six months worth of podcasts if, that, if you're releasing one a week. Or maybe you want to just do one that's 15 episodes. They may be about three months. So it's really going to be up to you on how you want to go ahead and create that schedule. How often will you go ahead and release seasonal podcasts? Are you going to release them only in the spring or will you release them in the spring and then in the fall and kind of take that break in the summer? It's going to be up to you, but you'll have to decide on that whenever you decide to go ahead and execute on the idea of a seasonal podcast. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of a seasonal podcast. So number one pro is that you can create content pretty much on your schedule. It's really going to be up to you. I did this with my podcast, Be The Experience, and I created the content as I could get the guests to come on to my program. But it also took me editing time. It took me time to go in and tell the story, to, to develop the storyline so that each episode weaved into one another. Do you have to do that? Not necessarily. Is it a good thing to weave episode to episode? Yes, so that it gets people to listen from one episode to the next so they can catch up on what is going on. It keeps them more invested with your podcast. Number two, you could release all of your episodes at once. So say you have 15 episodes that you have in the can. You could just go ahead and dump those all out and then just start promoting the hell out of your, your podcast and getting people to go in and listen to your podcast, whether it be in iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you are, uh, you are promoting your podcast. Number three, you're not always chasing the content. Podcasters these days are typically doing a podcast a week, and it's typically um, they get a guest, and then they go and they release content, but something that I see as a problem with this is that um, sometimes you don't always get the best content if you're always releasing every week. In fact, if you're doing something that's every week, it's almost like it's turning it into a job, and you are typically doing like something like here at the radio station where you're going in day in and day out, and uh, not always are you going to get the best news, or not always are you going to get the best guest, so it's really going to be up to you as to whether or not you want to 
chase that content and chase down that guest because uh, life happens and people have to reschedule and sometimes it leaves you uh, out of a podcast, which is why I recommend that you're always batching your podcast. You're recording ahead of time if you're doing a weekly podcast. But in this case, we're doing we're talking about seasonal. You will be batching episodes anyway because you may want to release them all at one time. And number four kind of coincides with number five is that you get to set your own schedule and this gives you time, number five, to think thoughtfully about the content that you want to create that you uh, think about the scripts that you want to write because I typically do my podcast in a scripted slash uh, impromptu format. The story that I tell is definitely scripted, but the interviews are unscripted. They, I mean, they, I do have notes when I'm interviewing someone. However, um, I am typically just having a conversation with them, but I am telling a story. And number six, you really are going to be marketing your podcast if you release all at once. Um, all on your schedule, it's gonna be up to you as you have time. Okay, so marketing of your podcast is always going to be happening, but it's really going to be on your schedule. It's going to be up to you. Now, let's talk about some of the cons that come with a seasonal podcast. And don't and keep in mind, these cons and these pros um, are only from my own view and philosophy. You may have seen some uh, other philosophies or views of how seasonal podcasts work. I'd actually love to see you write them down in the comments below. Number one, mass releases may get you all the downloads, but it may not help you grow the audience over time. What you see typically with weekly podcasts is that you get an audience that tunes in every single week that wants to hear what you had to say. And with a seasonal podcast where you're just releasing all at once, you may not be growing that audience all at once. So that's something that you have to keep in mind if you're thinking about dropping all your episodes so that your listener can binge all at once. Number two, you may not be building the best behaviors for your listeners' habits. We live in a very strange time right now where people are either binging content or they are creating that behavior where they come and they return to consume every week because they know that you're going to be releasing a podcast on the same day at the same time. And uh, it's just an interesting way of how we build and grow our audience. But what I will say with this is that a con of having a seasonal podcast may not be building that value for your listeners' habits so they can come back and consume your podcast, especially if you're someone who's got a business owner uh, type podcast where you're looking to provide value every week and you do something that is seasonal. It may not work out the way you want it to. It may work better if you are doing something every week because people are looking to come back and listen to your interviews or listen to your topic every week. But it's totally going to be up to you and how you want to execute on the release of your podcast. I'm a big believer in habits and I'm a big believer in in creating habits for other people so that they can be invested in something that you are doing. So kind of think about how you want to get your audience invested in you and your podcast and what will keep them coming back to consume more of your content. And my last con really is that seasonal podcasts don't work really well if you don't have an audience. Now, if you have an audience that is already built in somewhere, maybe you've built an audience on Facebook, maybe you have a built-in audience on Twitter, may work very well there or maybe even better. And this is something that I talk about in a video right here about email marketing. If you have a an audience on your email list, this may be a good way to get them to listen to your podcast. But if you don't have any type of audience, it's really not going to be beneficial to you other than the fact that you're creating content, you're releasing in a seasonal format, and you're constantly promoting. You're constantly promoting out that season to people who want to listen. It's really going to be up to you, but I want you to think about how you deliver your content, how you record your content, and how you're going to keep people involved with your content. This is key when you think about doing a seasonal podcast. Now, when you go in and you do these seasonal podcasts and you're doing the recordings with maybe some of your guests, uh, you may find that you are not getting the best quality sound out of the podcast and maybe because uh, you aren't using the right type of headphones. And I have a video that uh, talks all about this right over here on your right hand side. It's the best podcast headphones that you could use when you're recording and I break it all down for you right there in that particular video. As usual, don't forget to subscribe, share this out with your friends. Leave a comment down below if you're on YouTube watching this and leave a thumbs up. It definitely helps with the ratings and rankings of this channel. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time.